Hello, everyone. This is an ABC News digital special report. I'm Dan Kleffler in New York, and we are watching live coverage of the conclave. 115 cardinals of the Roman Catholic Church eligible to vote are inside the Pauline Chapel. You can see the live shot there where soon behind closed doors in the Sistine Chapel, they will elevate one of their own and elect a Supreme Pontiff. The cardinals are about to make their way into the Sistine Chapel. Right now, looking, though, inside the Pauline, Cardinal Giovanni Battista Ray is presiding over this celebration this morning. Cardinal Ray is the Prefect Emeritus of the Congregation of Bishops and was elevated to Cardinal in 2001. He retired as Prefect in June 2010, which means that he is not eligible to vote for the next Pope and is thus given the honor of leading this ceremony. I want to bring in Father John Guthrie, who is with the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops. He is in Washington, D.C., Skyping with us this afternoon. Father, thank you for joining us. Um, it is a momentous day. A lot of people have been looking forward to this with a, with a good deal of excitement. Absolutely, Dan. It's a very exciting day for the church as it transitions to a new era, really. As every new pope comes in, it's a new time, and so it's very exciting for us. What has been the consensus over the past couple of days? We've been hearing that some of the cardinals say that there, in fact, is a growing deal of confidence that a new pope will be elected in a relatively short period of time. Yeah, it's it's. I think it's probably true. It won't be today, I'm almost certain. Uh, but I would say by tomorrow or Thursday, very likely. But what we don't know, it's uh, they haven't laid their cards on the table, so to speak. Uh, this first vote is very important to, for the first time, they'll see what everybody else is thinking. And then the prayer and the dialogue will continue until someone reaches the 77 two-thirds vote necessary. Right, of the 115 cardinals that are eligible to vote, as you mentioned, two-thirds majority is required, which is 77, uh, 77 uh, votes. I, I wanted to read to you something that Cardinal Dolan, uh, the Archbishop of New York, had sent out to his priests in a letter this morning saying, there seems to be hope that we could, with God's guidance, have a new Holy Father by Thursday. Sounds like a pretty optimistic timeline for things. Oh, I think that's probably right. Uh, once they see who are the real contenders, I think they have an, uh, some idea of that now, but once they see what the votes are, um, we pray that by Thursday, Friday, that the Holy Spirit will influence uh, the electors and we'll have, we'll have somebody, uh, a new Pope coming out on the, on the loggia. Now, Father, as we're watching the Cardinals make their way over to the Sistine Chapel, they're reciting the Litany of Saints. Could you explain the importance of this? Yes, it's a very, very beautiful thing uh, that they're calling on the saints who uh, are our brothers and sisters in the Lord. And it, in, in fact, when Cardinal Ray and his uh, original, as he started with his opening prayer, he was talking about the fact that all the church is gathered with them in prayer now. And not just the church on earth, but the church of heaven. And so we pray the litany of the saints at baptisms, we pray it at confirmations, we pray it at ordinations, because what we do here, what they're doing now as they enter the Sistine Chapel is something very holy and they want the saints to be praying for them because this is an extremely daunting task they have in front of them and too weighty for any of them to handle on their own. So knowing the saints are with them is very, very uh, important for them. Father Guthrie, stay with us, but I also want to bring in Father Matt Malone, Editor-in-Chief of America, Roman Catholic Magazine. Father Malone, you're Skyping with us from Rome. And Indeed I am. If you can, explain a little bit about the process for the election, which is something that captivates so many, Roman Catholic or otherwise, because of the amount of detail that goes into the process. Indeed. Uh, well, today, uh, as was pointed out, um, they attended Mass at St. Peter's Basilica and returned to their hotel. Um, and then the, uh, they traveled to the Apostolic Palace. Uh, they processed from the Pauline Chapel, and now they're entering the Sistine Chapel. Uh, and each cardinal will take an oath. And then they will, as uh, uh, Father said, they will vote. Uh, they will have one vote today, and uh, that is an extremely important vote. 
because it does give an indication to everyone uh, where people are standing, where people stand, and what they're thinking. Now, of course, virtually no one expects uh, a decision today, but um, this has been a month of surprises. Yeah. It, it, it's, it certainly has been. Father, as we're watching the Cardinals make their way as they're bowing at the altar at the Pauline Chapel and moving over to the Sistine Chapel, there are others that will be in this procession, correct, that will go into the Sistine Chapel? Yes, there will be some there to, uh, to assist them. Um, there will be the uh, secretary of the College of Cardinals. Uh, there will also be more practical assistance in the area. Uh, you know, doctors and nurses and uh, secretaries and that sort of thing. Because there is still a process before the vote actually occurs. There is, there are uh, some words, there are prayers, and silent meditation in the Sistine Chapel with others other than the Cardinals that takes place before the actual vote, correct? Yes, that's right. That's can... right. So when they, uh, we will, we will see uh, part of the uh, uh, of the ceremony before they, they actually close the doors and proceed to uh, their deliberations in private. And you can see the Cardinals making their way up to the altar there, wearing their red robes, their rochettos, those white garments, the mozetta, the half cape, and those famous, very distinguished red hats, the berettas. Father Guthrie, I wanted to bring you back into this. There has been so much discussion about the direction of the Catholic Church. And as we've been hearing about the, the confidence that, a, that a, a new pope could be elected in a relatively short period of time, do you feel that this has been a pretty unanimous group of cardinals in these past couple of days? <laughs> well, I think that they've been pretty careful about uh, showing their hand about what they believe. I, I think that we are, we're not in, privy to be in the room with them in the general congregation to hear what they're hearing. So I don't know what the unanimity is. We pray as Catholics that they can come to a consensus uh, and come to unity. I think that uh, Cardinal Sedano in his homily talked very strongly about the need for unity in this whole process. Because the Pope is uh, one of his most important tasks is to be a unifier, to, to unify us in love, in faith, and in hope. And so uh, that's our prayer, that uh, wh how unified they are right now, I pray they very much are, but by the end of it, the, one of the things that they're going to be doing with the oath is to say that whoever is elected, we are going to stand behind this, this man and uh, we're going to be unified. And I think that's going to be a very important for the church going forward. 115 cardinals will enter into the Sistine Chapel for that vote. And Father Malone, I wanted to get your thoughts. Do you feel that this is a, a unified college? Well, I, I think they're most certainly unified in their desire to make the right decision. Um, you know, there are, of course, always uh, differences of opinion, even among a, a group of people uh, such as this, who were all appointed by uh, by either John Paul II uh, or Benedict XVI, for the most part, the overwhelming majority of them, uh, and though they and so they all they all share a certain philosophical disposition, a certain uh, uh, outlook on the church, but at the same time, uh, you know, they do have differences of opinion, and uh, the question will be uh, of the major crises facing the church, uh, you know, dealing with the sexual abuse crisis in the West, uh, dealing with the, the crisis from the Vatican bureaucracy and the crisis of belief uh, in, uh, in Europe and in, and in North America, you know, how, uh, who is the person who can best meet uh, all of those challenges or assemble the right team to do so? Each of the Cardinals has had a chance over the past couple of days to make a speech and because of the size of the college, some of them had to be shortened down to a five minute speech, but at the same time, each one had their voice heard. And I'm wondering how much those speeches play into the decision or if cardinals come into the Vatican with an idea of who, in fact, they want to support as the next pontiff. Father Guthrie, I, I wanted to pose that question to you. Yeah, I think the, the speeches are very important in the, in the unifying of the cardinals, that they, they come in, I pray, with some openness. They may have some ideas, obviously. They know, some of them know each other a little better than others. 
But for some of these, they're new cardinals and they don't know each other at all. And so I think those days, that's why they took their time to really look at the issues and have a chance to express their opinions. And not just uh, in speeches, but at the coffee bar, uh, at dinner, at the, having chances to just rub elbows and talk about where the church is and where they would like to see the church go. And we're listening as we can hear them singing the Litany of Saints as they're making their procession into the Sistine Chapel. Father Malone, I wanted to get your thoughts on the, the, the process once they are inside the Sistine Chapel and the door has been closed. Does the vote take place immediately? Um, I'm, I'm not actually entirely sure. I think that they, um, uh, I think that they have a, a period of prayer, and then they have a um, uh, a uh, kind of uh, someone delivers a, a, a talk on the nature of what they're about to do, and then uh, and then they they can then proceed to a vote. If, if Father Malone and Father Guthrie, I wanted to open this up to, to both of you. Can you explain a little bit about the order in which the Cardinals are making their procession? And it, I believe it also has an impact in the seating in the Sistine Chapel. Yeah, they are entering uh, in the order of seniority. So uh, Cardinal Ray, who is the top ranking Cardinal elector, uh, he has entered last. Uh, that's a tradition in the church that the most senior always enters last. Uh, the last shall be first and the first shall be last, uh, said the gospel. And as we're watching there, the cardinals assembling inside, preparing for the first vote. I believe we still have Marcy Gonzalez on the phone with us. I, we will be checking back with Marcy in a moment. She is in Vatican City with ABC. And uh, Father Guthrie, uh, I, I wanted to ask you a little bit about um, the, the direction of the church and perhaps uh, any leanings towards the possibility of a North American and maybe possibly even the first U.S. Cardinal becoming Pope. Well, there's been quite a bit of conjecture on that recently around Cardinal Dolan and Cardinal O'Malley and even Cardinal Whirl here in Washington. Um, the traditional view was that they would never elect an American because America was the superpower and that would put some, uh, some unneeded pressure on him and the papacy because of that connection. But I think that the, I personally think it's gonna be a long shot still. But for the first time, Americans are really getting a, a serious hearing in terms of a possibly being uh, elected pope. And it all has to do with uh, the question of what, uh, as we talked uh, last week or 10 days ago about the new evangelization and what is the right face for the church to have in the face of a world that's increasingly secularized and increasingly seemingly turning away from faith uh, of not just Catholicism, but many different types of organized religion. So the, what voice can give Jesus Christ the best, uh, what can be the best use of that voice of the papacy? And, I, and some think that uh, the Americans, especially Cardinal Dolan, has a great presence in the world and a great media presence. Now that's an American perspective and these 115 cardinals are trying to look at it from a, a world perspective. And so what might play for Americans might not be the exact media presence that would appeal to an African or to an Asian audience. So there's so much in the mix here, but it is encouraging to know that Americans are getting a, a serious look and they will have a serious voice in this whole thing. Father Malone, how are the American cardinals received uh, elsewhere around the world. As Father Guthrie had pointed out, that obviously it's seen, they're seen very favorable here in the United States as possibly changing the face, face of the Roman Catholic Church, but, but elsewhere, outside the U.S. borders. Well, I think Father Guthrie is correct. I think that there has been a change in the, uh, in the stature of the American delegation and the College of Cardinals. And 
Uh, actually, I mean, I, perhaps it, it hasn't been a change in uh, the stature, their stature as much as it's been a, a change in the perception of it. Uh, and I think that that's for a couple of reasons, some of which Father Guthrie alluded, Guthrie alluded to. The first is that the, you know, the, the, the challenges in the church are so enormous at the moment that I think every option has to be on the table. Uh, and so they're looking in non-traditional places for possibilities. Uh, the second thing is that Pope Benedict's resignation being unprecedented and, uh, you know, in the modern age, uh, really sets a shock. And I think it has made the unthinkable thinkable for a lot of people. Uh, it's sort of created a space in which people can reimagine and re-envision uh, uh, possible future directions. And the third thing is that uh, the, one of the principal crises facing the church is a managerial crisis, and the Americans, for good or ill, are thought to be fairly decent managers, and they have some experience managing uh, 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 the abuse cases, which is another challenge facing the West, at least. Spondio vovio agiuro, sic medios adjuvet et hec sancta de evangelia, que manu mea tango. Et ego Georgius Cardinalis Alenceri, Spondeo, Vovaio, Acjuro, Sigme Deius Adjuet, et Hec Sancta Dei Evangelia, Que Manu Mea Tango. Et ego Thomas Cardinalis Colum, Spondeo, Vovio, Acjuro, Sigme Deius Adjuet, et Hec Sancta Dei Evangelia, Que Manu Mea Tango. Et ego Domini Cardinalis Duca, Spondeo Voveo Acuro, Sigme Deus Adjuvet, et hec Sancta Dei Evangelia, que manu mea tam. Et ego Willem Jacobus, Cardinalis Eik, Spondeo Voveo Acuro, Sigme Deus Adjuvet, et hec Sancta Dei Evangelia, que manu mea tango. Et ego Iosef Cardinalis Betori, spondeo voveo ac iuro. Sic me Deus adiuvet, et ec Sancta Dei Evangelia, que manu mea tango. Ego Timothy Cardinalis Stolen, Spondio Vovio at Euro, Sigmedeo Sadjuvit, et ex Sancta Dei Evangelia Que Manu Mea Tango. That was the Archbishop of New York, Timothy Dolan, citing his oath. As all 115 cardinals will continue the process of conclave in just a short time, as the last cardinal will take their oath, the master of liturgical celebrations, Archbishop Guido Marini, will then give the order. And Father Guthrie, can you explain the significance of the order? Because at that point, that is when the 115 cardinals will be in seclusion, correct? That's correct. Uh, he'll say extra omnes, everyone out, and they will close the doors and lock it. And that's the last you'll see. I think the TV cameras will go out at that point as well. And uh, they will be there until, of course, the election happens and moving back and forth from the Sistine Chapel to the Casa Santa Marta. But they'll be in seclusion that entire time till election happens. The local time there is about 20 minutes after 5, and we could expect that first vote in the next one to three hours, is that correct? Yes, they have to do some work, as I mentioned, of uh, choosing a diff nine different cardinals, but uh, that shouldn't take a, a long time, and uh, they'll be ready to, to cast that first vote. I must say, Dan, I'm, I'm watching this very moved by the international quality and as you see the whole world basically represented here from every continent. It's, uh, it's quite striking, uh, the Catholicity of the church in, in these 115 electors. Luis Antonio Cardinalis Tagle, Spondeo, Voveo, Acuro, Sigmedeus Adjuvet, Ethic Sancta Dei Evangelia, 
贵马努梅亚当狗。E te go rigo Ioanne Zudovicus Karina Listoro spondeo voveo a giuro sigme Deus ad iubet et ex sancta di evangelia qui mannea tanga E te go atilius cardinalis Nicora spondeo voveo a giuro sigme Deus ad iubet et ex sancta dei evangelia qui mannea tanga Et ego, Guglielmus Josef Cardinalis Leveda, sponde o voveo ac iuro, sic me Deus adjuvet et hec sancta de Evangelia que manu me atango. Et ego, Franz Cardinalis Rode, sponde o voveo ac iuro, sic me Deus adjuvet et hec sancta de Evangelia que manu me atango. Et ego Leonardus Cardinalis Sandri, sponde o bobio a giuro, sic me Deus adjuvet et ex santa dei evangelia, que manu mea tango. Et ego Ioannes Cardinalis Laiolo, sponde o bobio a giuro, sic me Deus adjuvet et ex santa dei evangelia, que manu mea tango. Et ego... O Josef Cardinalis Cordes, sponde o vovio, a chiuro, sic me Deo satio vet, et ex sancta Dei Evangelia, que manu mea tango. Et ego Angelus Cardinalis Comastri, sponde o vovio, a chiuro, sic me Deo satio vet, et ex sancta Dei Evangelia, que manu mea tango. Ed ego Stanislaus Cardinalis Ruco, sponde o voveo a giuro, sic me Deus adiuvet, et hec sancta Dei Evangelia, que manu mea tango. Ed ego Raphael Cardinalis Farina, sponde o voveo a giuro, sic me Deus adiuvet, et hec sancta Dei Evangelia, que manu mea tango. Et ego Angelus Cardinalis Amato, spondeo voveo a chiuro, sic me Deus adiuvet et ex sancta Dei Evangelia, que manu mea tango. Et ego Robertus Cardinalis Sara, spondeo voveo a chiuro, sic me Deus adiuvet et ex sancta Dei Evangelia, Qui manu mea tango. Et ego Franciscus Cardinalis Monterisi, spondeo voveo a chiuro, sic me Deus adiuvet et ex santa Dei Evangelia, qui manu mea tango. Et ego Raimondus Leo Cardinalis Burke, spondeo voveo a chiuro, Sic me Deus adjuvet et hec sancta de Evangelia, que manu mea tango. Et ego Conradus Cardinalis Koch, spondio vovio ac iuro, sic me Deus adjuvet et hec sancta de Evangelia, que manu mea tango. Et ego Paulus Cardinalis Sardi spondeo voveo a chiuro, sic me Deus adjuvet et ex santa Dei Evangelia que manu mea tango. Et ego Maurus Cardinalis Piacenza spondeo voveo a chiuro, sic me Deus adjuvet et ex santa Dei Evangelia que manu mea tango. Et ego Velasius Cardinalis de Paulis, spondeo vovio ac iuro, sic me Deus adivet et ex santa de Evangelia que manu mea tango. Et ego Ioannes Franciscus Cardinalis Ravasi, 
spondeo, voveo a chiuro. Sic me Deus adiovet, et ex santa Dei Evangelia que manumea tango. Et ego cardinalis, Ferdinandus Filoni, spondeo, voveo a chiuro, sic me Deus adiovet. Et ec santa Dei Evangelia, que mano mea tango. Et ego Emmanuel Cardinals Monteiro de Castro, spondeo, voveo a chiuro, sic me Deus adiovet, et ec santa Dei Evangelia, que manu mea tango. Et ego santos cardinalis abril castelló, spondeo voveo ag iuro, sigme deus adiuvet, et ex santa dei evangelia, que manu mea tango. Et ego Antonius Maria, cardinalis abrilló, spondeo Vovio a chiuro, sic me Deus adiuet, et ex sancta Dei Evangelia, que manu mea tango. Et ego Iosefus Cardinalis Bertello, sponde o vovio a chiuro, sic me Deus adiuet, et ex sancta Dei Evangelia, que manu mea tango. Et ego Franciscus Cardinalis Cocco Palmeri, osponde o voveo a chiuro, sic me Deus adiuvet, et ex santa Dei Evangelia, que manu mea tango. Et ego João Brás Cardinalis de Avis, osponde o voveo a chiuro, sic me Deus adiuvet, et ex santa Dei Evangelia, que manu mea tango. Et ego Edwin Cardinalis O'Brien spondeo voveo ac iuro sic me Deus adjuvet et heic sancta Dei Evangelia que manu mea tango. Et ego Dominicus Cardinalis Calcanio spondeo voveo ac iuro sic me Deus adjuvet et ex sancta Dei Evangelia que manu mea tango. Et ego Iosefus Cardinalis Versal disponde o vove o acchiuro, sic me Deus adiuvet, et ex santa Dei Evangelia, que manu mea tango. Et ego Iacobus Cardinalis Harvey disponde o vove o acchiuro, sic me Deus adiuvet, et ex santa Dei Evangelia, que manu mea tango. And so the last of the Cardinals, all 115, have recited their own personal oath. And the voting is about to begin in just a short period of time inside the Sistine Chapel, waiting for that Master of Liturgical Celebrations, Archbishop Guido Marini, to give the order, extra omnes. Extra omnes. Omnis. And that, Latin for everyone, out. Swiss guards flanking both sides of the doors to the Sistine Chapel. And soon, as no one but the 115 voting cardinals inside, they will be locked in, and the voting will begin shortly thereafter. The bishops exiting out of the Sistine Chapel right now. You can see the Master of Liturgical Celebrations right on the right of your screen.
Father Guthrie, if I could bring you in, talk about the process for securing such a sacred and private place, <laughs> sweeping for any kind of listening devices, any kind of electronic monitoring <laughs> devices, the Sistine Chapel has been prepared. Sure has. They've uh, done all that work already and uh, they're getting ready now to close the door, lock it and seal it with a, uh, a seal. And of course the Swiss guards are there, uh, as they always are. Uh, so it is, it is well sealed and uh, and rightly so. This needs to be handled between these 115 and God and of course all of us that are praying with and for them in these uh, however long we have. Uh, I trust we're all going to be praying that God's will be done. And the indication that we will get that a successful vote has occurred or any vote has occurred will be from the chimney off of the Sistine Chapel. That room that has been outfitted with that special stove is just off of the chapel, is that what I understand? It's, uh, it's actually within that section that uh, the uh, Marini is walking through right now. They have the stove in there, the Cardinals are on the other side, and here he closes the door. And so with that, the process begins in secret. The 115 cardinals could have their first vote today. We could have a new pope as early as 1 o'clock Eastern time today for Father Matt Malone, Skyping with us from Rome, and Father John Guthrie from Washington, D.C. Fathers, thank you both so much for your insight and your commentary, and of course we will be back as soon as there is smoke billowing from that chimney outside on the Sistine Chapel. It could be black, it may be white, certainly dramatic. So please join us then, right here on abcnews.com. I'm Dan Pleffler in New York, and we now return you to your regularly scheduled program.